Hi, I'm Professor Rich, and this is TYT History. What I'm going to talk about today is the election of 1980, and I'm doing this for two reasons. One, because this is kind of the Republicans' dream scenario for 2012, and uh, two, uh, I think it's a really misunderstood election. This is, of course, the election where Ronald Reagan is going to beat the incumbent Jimmy Carter. Um, Jimmy Carter, uh, who was, of course, president in 1980, uh, had defeated Gerald Ford in 1976. Carter had been a one-term governor of Georgia, like Obama. He had relatively little experience. Um, he ran as an outsider, and he ran on change and reform uh, after the, the, the trials of, of Watergate in Vietnam had racked the country. Carter presented himself as a very pious man. He was deeply religious. It's kind of hard to remember this, but uh, religion used to be more of a democratic issue. If you think back to the civil rights movement, of course, was uh, fundamentally a, re a religious movement. Uh, it'll actually be in the election of 1980 when religion shifts over and becomes a conservative issue. Carter also had the advantage of being from the South. He was, of course, the governor of Georgia. Uh, the South, which had been reliably Democrat since before the Civil War and up through 1960, had begun to shift over to the Republican side with Barry Goldwater's run in 64 and then Nixon in 68 and 72 when the Republicans began embracing states' rights, which, of course, as we'll see in a minute here, was code for uh, endings, or opposing the Civil Rights Movement. Now, as president, Carter had a rough time, as you probably know. Um, he struggled in foreign policy. Uh, he had a foreign policy based on morality as opposed to most presidents who base their foreign policy on simply what they think is going to help the United States. Uh, he gave the Panama Canal back to Panama, which upset a lot of people. Uh, he um, uh, negotiated a second strategic arms limitations uh, treaty with the Russians, SALT II, uh, to limit the number of, nu of nuclear weapons, which opened him up to be being accused of being soft on communism. Uh, and, and he did have uh, one great success, which was negotiating peace between Israel and Egypt in the Camp David Accords. Uh, but this is actually going to have severe long-term effects as uh, angry countries in the Middle East are going to begin, or, or continue, I should say, restricting American oil supply, uh, particularly in 80 when Carter runs for re-election, which is as much as uh, one of the two big things that's going to prevent him from winning the 1980 election. The other, of course, being the hostage crisis. Way back in, in the 1950s, uh, Eisenhower had overthrown the democratically elected government of Iran uh, and replaced it with a dictator, the Shah of Iran. And in 1978 and then in 1979, the Iranian people began protesting and rose up and overthrew the Shah. He fled to America. Uh, he tried to flee to America. Carter actually said no. He went to Mexico, but when it uh, came to light he had cancer, Carter allowed him to go to New York City for treatment. This enraged Iranians, and they seized a number of Americans hostage uh, and held them for the remainder of Carter's presidency, uh, which is going to be over 400 days. Uh, Carter's inability to free the hostages, uh, particularly his failed attempt to free them on April 24th of 1980, are going to effectively doom his presidency. I should point out, by the way, a lot of people say that Obama's decision to go and take out Osama bin Laden was a no-brainer, that any president would have made that decision, and there was no political downside, and he shouldn't receive credit for it. Uh, this is obviously untrue because of Carter. Uh, Carter sent uh, a similar strike team um, to try to free the hostages in 1980. Uh, 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 San uh, bad weather uh, flared up, and two of our helicopters crashed into each other, ending the mission, and uh, really painting Carter as a failure, and really cementing his reputation as a man who couldn't get the job done. This could have easily happened to Obama. Uh, uh, some uh, tra catastrophe like this could have happened, and do you think the Republicans would have then said, oh, it was a no-brainer, anybody would have gone, it was just bad luck, it wasn't Obama's fault. No, they would have destroyed him over the issue, and and this election uh, uh, probably would look a lot different right now. So I, I, that argument, I think, is, is, is ridiculous talking point nonsense, in my opinion. Uh, Carter's other big problem was the economy. Now, like Obama, Carter inherited a really bad economy from the Republicans. Um, it, when, when Carter takes office uh, in 1977, unemployment is at 7.5%, uh, but inflation um, is at 5.2%, uh, uh, which is much higher. Uh, of, Obama, when he took office, had 9.7% unemployment, uh, but no inflation. Inflation was, was non-existent in the month that Obama was sworn in. Um, now, one of the difference is that Carter, the economy is going to actually improve under Carter uh, for the first couple of years of his presidency, first three years actually. Uh, whereas Obama, uh, while the downward trajectory has slowed, we haven't seen real dramatic improvement. Um, although here as we head towards the election, it does appear that the economy is recovering under Obama uh, slowly, granted, 
Um, whereas with, in the case of Carter, the economy recovered, and then in 1980, the whole thing blew up again. And the problem in the, in the 70s wasn't deregulation of banks. Uh, it was energy crises. It, it was, uh, uh, particularly Arab countries, uh, jacking up the price of oil, causing a supply shock and leading to stagflation or high inflation at the same time as we have high unemployment. Um, and uh, honestly, Carter's foreign policy, as well as the Fed's response, uh, didn't help with this. Uh, uh, by the time Carter's running for re-election, uh, unemployment will be back up to 7.5% and it come down into the fives uh, earlier. Uh, but inflation will be at 12.8%, which is just catastrophic. Uh, whereas Obama, uh, inflation right now is 2.3%, which is kind of nice right there in the range where you want it to be. Uh, so one big difference I see between 2012 and 1980 is uh, Carter saw the economy improve significantly uh, and then get much worse during 1980, whereas Obama uh, saw the economy get worse in the beginning of his presidency and then a, a slow, um, uneven, and, and ultimately probably unsatisfactory recovery. Uh, but that trajectory matters. The, the impression with Carter was everything was getting worse much quickly, uh, very quickly, while the impression with Obama is it's getting better, it's just taking its time. Carter will be challenged in the primary. Oh, oh I should mention as well, um, in 1980, uh, or actually late 1979, the Soviets will invade Afghanistan. Uh, Carter will respond to this uh, by boycotting the 1980 Olympics, which will be very controversial. Many people are sympathetic to the athletes, who of course have been training their whole lives for this. Um, and, and that's going to hurt Carter's support as well. Uh, Carter actually will be challenged within his own uh, party. Ted Kennedy uh, will run against uh, uh, Carter. Um, and while Carter's not ever really in danger of not gaining the nomination, it certainly does make a lot of news, and Kennedy does have uh, quite a bit of support, and it is going to severely undermine Carter. Uh, the convention that year will be particularly messy. Um, uh, but Carter, of course, will get the nomination. Uh, Carter's going to run against the Republican Ronald Reagan. Now, Ronald Reagan is a, a former actor uh, in the uh, uh, Red Scare in the 1950s. He had named names to the House Un-American Activities Committee, uh, accusing his fellow actors of being communist. He had become president of the Screen Actors Guild. Uh, and in 1964, he had become a very outspoken supporter of presidential candidate Barry Goldwater, uh, really probably the first ultra-conservative uh, in the modern era. Uh, Reagan would get into politics himself in 1966, running for and becoming elected uh, governor of California. Um, uh, and he will be become the darling of the, the conservative movement in the Republican Party. Uh, he will uh, be the Ted Kennedy of 1976. He'll challenge his party's uh, eventual nominee, Gerald Ford, and the incumbent, of course, Gerald Ford, uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, undermine Ford's run in 76. And in 1980, he's the presumptive nominee before it begins. Uh, but it's important to note that people were fairly uncomfortable with Reagan. He, he was seen as pretty radical. Um, he was actually uh, uh, challenged in his primary by a moderate, uh, what we used to call a liberal Republican, and those have been hunted to extinction, but they used to exist, uh, named John Anderson, an Illinois congressman who had turned on Nixon and Watergate and had turned on Nixon's handling of the war in Vietnam. Uh, Anderson will actually have a reasonably successful third party run, uh, gaining quite a bit of support and early on in the election actually winning in the polls. Uh, and as we're going to talk about in a minute, he gets to appear in one of the debates. Carter also began the move towards deregulation. This is usually associated with the Republicans, and particularly Reagan, but it actually begins under Carter. Uh, Carter is going to significantly deregulate the airlines, which honestly probably needed to be done. Um, he's also going to deregulate uh, home brewing of beer. Uh, there were still laws on the books from way back in the Great Depression um, that, that said that it was illegal to brew uh, beer in your home, and Carter is actually going to make it legal, so you may not think a whole lot about Carter, but you can thank him for that. He also deregulates the price of oil, which is one of the things that leads to the energy crisis that we're going to experience uh, really all throughout the 70s, uh, but particularly in, in Carter's uh, uh, presidency. One of the things probably interesting to us today is that the 1980 election, uh, like 1976, was funded entirely by federal dollars. It was a publicly financed election. Both candidates were limited to $29.4 million, and even if you include both of them and John Anderson, in 2012 dollars, the spending for the entire presidential election was under $800 million. There will probably be individual Americans who spend more than $800 million on the 2012 election, and the total cost uh, might run into the multiple billions. Uh, so when we talk about the growth of money in elections, this is what we're talking about. Uh, Wolf-Pack.com. Check it out. Uh, Reagan was upbeat and, and optimistic. Uh, 
and, and he had a lot of proposals. Uh, Carter, on the other hand, was gloomy and dour uh, and, and, and came across as very kind of preachy, uh, particularly famously in a, a television address called the Malay Speech. And this actually turned a lot of people off. Um, Carter spent a lot of time talking about what Reagan would do. He said Reagan would roll back the Civil Rights Movement. He would undo many of the policies of the New Deal, which turned out to be true. Uh, Carter wanted detente. He wanted to end the Cold War. Uh, Reagan wanted to reignite it. He wanted to jack up military spending and get back into it with the Soviets. And, and of course, the Cold War had been cooling off really since Nixon. Um, uh, but, but Reagan is going to get elected, of course, and he is going to, to reignite that. Another interesting thing to realize is that at the beginning of this election, uh, fundamentalist Christians or evangelical Christians were solidly behind Carter, who was very, very publicly uh, and kind of ostentatiously religious. Uh, but the major moral majority movement, led by Jerry Falwell, the TV evangelist, um, will actually cause this shift in people who identify themselves as evangelical Christians away from the Democratic Party to the Republican Party. And this happens over issues like abortion um, and, and really, quite frankly, opposition to the civil rights movement. Um, and by election day, Reagan will win, win, will win this group by almost a two-to-one margin. Reagan, of course, also wins the richest Americans, talking about parallels to 2012. He ends up winning them 66% to 26% in the highest income group. Uh, so back then, certainly, the Republican Party was already the party of the wealthy. Uh, Reagan dominates the West and the suburbs. Uh, the suburbs were a new dynamic. People, uh, before we talked about rural and urban, and urban tended to be Democrat and rural tended to be Republican by this time. But the suburbs are something new, uh, and the Republicans will do very well there, uh, probably because these people had left the inner city and had kind of moved out into their own little bubble, their own little isolated world where they could ignore the problems uh, that, that they used to have to confront every day in the city. And that's going to be a significant change in American politics. Reagan promised, as I said, more defense spending. He believed in supply-side economics. Uh, the idea here being that if we dramatically cut government spending, although not military, we'd have to jack that up, uh, and cut taxes, he proposed a 30% tax cut primarily on the richest people in America and corporations, that we would actually increase tax revenue and grow the economy. In fact, Reagan promised to balance the budget in three years, and he's going to attack Carter fairly viciously on what by Reagan standards would turn out to be a pretty minuscule uh, budget deficit. Uh, Reagan will do these things. He will cut taxes once, and then he'll raise them 11 times. And he will cut government spending, but he won't balance the budget in three years. He will, uh, in fact, create unprecedented budgets and begin the era of peacetime massive deficits and driving this country further and further into debt. And after running uh, against Carter's budget deficits, which he said were destructive at the time, he will famously say budgets uh, our deficits don't really matter, and we should just ignore them once he gets elected. I promise you, if Mitt Romney gets elected, that will happen again. Take it to the bank. Reagan called for a repeal of what was called the windfall oil tax. Um, oil companies were making a killing uh, with the OPEC jacking up the oil prices, which was which was destroying the American economy. And uh, uh, Carter and a Democratic Congress had passed a, a extra tax on these profits the oil companies were getting simply by virtue of the, uh, the oil embargo from the Middle East. And Reagan wanted to take these taxes away and ensure that the oil companies could profit as much as they possibly could uh, uh, from the economic crisis that was uh, doing so much damage to Americans. The Republican Party will end their 40-year support of the Equal Rights Amendment, guaranteeing equal rights to women. Uh, at this time, they are backing away as quickly as they can from any sort of support for civil rights, which used to be kind of a bipartisan issue for a while there, uh, but by now it's certainly not. Um, Reagan will make a number of gaffes. At one point, he'll say that trees cause pollution. Uh, I don't. You probably can't call it a gaffe, but he will kind of famously go to Philadelphia, Mississippi, and he will make a speech on states' rights. Of course, uh, what he means by states' rights is ending civil rights uh, protection. Um, Philadelphia, Mississippi is where the three uh, uh, civil rights workers were killed. If you've ever seen the movie Mississippi Burning, that's what it's about. So making that speech there, everybody got the message. Uh, this was uh, Ronald Reagan squarely coming down on the side of Southern racist. Uh, in fact, if you don't believe me, uh, here is a quote from his campaign strategist, Lee Atwater. He's being interviewed, and the interviewer says, but the fact is, isn't it, that Reagan does get to the Wallace voter. Wallace had been the racist governor of Alabama who ran in uh, 64 and 68. And to the racist side of the Wallace voter by doing away with legal services, by cutting down on food stamps. So you got that, and he's asking them. So you get to the racist by getting rid of programs like food stamps. And Reagan's campaign strategist, Lee Atwater, answers, and I hate to say this word, but I've, I've got to give you the, the, the facts here. 
You start out in 1950. This is Lee Atwater, Reagan's campaign strategist. You start out in 1954 by saying, nigger, nigger, nigger. By 1968, you can't say nigger. That hurts you. It backfires. So you say stuff like forced busing, states' rights, and all that stuff. You're getting so abstract now that you're talking about cutting taxes, and all these things you're talking about are totally economic things, and a byproduct of them is that blacks will get hurt worse than whites. And subconsciously, maybe that is part of it. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that if it is getting that abstract and that coded, that we are doing away with the racial problem one way or the other. You follow me? Because obviously sitting around and saying, we want to cut this, is much more abstract than even the busing thing, and a hell of a lot more abstract than nigger nigger. So when you hear Ronald Reagan talking about cutting government programs, cutting spending on the poor, uh, his own campaign strategist explained that's how you get a racist voter to vote Republican because they associate those programs, uh, which is not specifically true, by the way, with minorities. So you say, I'm going to cut food stamps. They hear, I'm going after black people. And that's what they like. Reagan, by the way, of course, didn't support busing. Uh, that was a hot uh, topic of the day. Uh, is it okay to bus a kid from a white neighborhood uh, to a school where he will end up in school with black kids? And uh, Reagan was opposed to that. The thing that I think is most lost about the 1980 election is how freaked out people were by Ronald Reagan. Uh, even as unpopular as Jimmy Carter was and unhappy people were with the way things were going, uh, Carter was actually leading for a good chunk of this election, and he was leading fairly late. Uh, Carter had approval ratings down in the 30s, and he was still beating Ronald Reagan because people thought he was too conservative. They thought he was too radical. So what happened? Well, probably the biggest thing that happened in the end, uh, aside from Carter's failure to get the hostages back, were the debates. Uh, Anderson, the third party guy, he had met all the qualifications to enter into the debates, but Carter refused to debate with him. And so they actually had a debate with just John Anderson and Ronald Reagan and no Jimmy Carter, who's of course the incumbent president. Uh, this did not go well for Carter. It hurt him in the polls, but Reagan came on and looked reasonable and great in the debate. And so in the next debate, Anderson is gone. They don't. He's kind of the Ron Paul of 1980 in this sense. Uh, and it's just uh, uh, Carter and Reagan. And uh, Carter is very serious and earnest, which he usually was. And, and, and Reagan basically plays Andy Griffith. He, he, he's very sociable and folksy and likable. Uh, Carter ends up saying uh, about nuclear weapons that he had talked to his daughter, uh, Amy Carter, who I think was 12 at the time, uh, and gets ridiculed for this, always oh, making nuclear policy based on what a 12-year-old says. Uh, but probably the most famous and important moment from this debate is Jimmy Carter attacks Ronald Reagan's proposals uh, to essentially kill Social Security and Medicare uh, and Medicaid. And uh, nobody remembers that, but they remember Reagan's response. Reagan's response was, there you go again. And he delivered the line the great, which makes sense because he was an actor. Uh, and everybody laughed. Uh, and, and, and that's very famous, and, and you probably remember that line. But do you remember that the attack Carter had launched that got that response was Reagan's desire to cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid? And that tells you a lot about our politics. Uh, nobody really wants to see these programs cut, but nobody remembers that Reagan wanted to do it. They just remember that he had a clever little line, uh, and he delivered it while coming back. Uh, I think that's incredibly instructive about how American politics works. Uh, Reagan, of course, ends the debate with his, with his very effective line, are you better off today than you were four years ago? We'll be hearing a lot of that over the next few months as we approach the, the 2012 election here. Uh, after the debates did not go well for Carter. They went very well for Reagan. He, he seemed affable and likable. He seemed like your grandfather. He seemed like Andy Griffith. And who wouldn't vote for Andy Griffith? And this is really going to be the tipping point in the election. Uh, George McGovern, the super liberal Democratic candidate who lost to Nixon in 1972, uh, can't stand Carter. And he actually comes out and endorses Ronald Reagan. Uh, the, Na the, the National Rifle Association, the NRA, had never endorsed a candidate. Uh, but they were angry that Carter had appointed uh, judges who favored gun control uh, to the federal courts and that he had banned hunting in the Alaskan Wildlife Refuge. And so they decided for the first time in their history to endorse a candidate, and they endorsed Ronald Reagan. And uh, we, nobody really understood this at the time, but that carried huge political clout. Um, in the end, Ronald Reagan won by 10%. Uh, he won 489 electoral votes to 49 electoral votes. Uh, but the election over the broad course of the whole thing, of the months that it went on, was actually much closer than that. It certainly didn't end up close. Uh, but Ronald Reagan is going to be ushered into office uh, and is going to dramatically change America. So there you have it, one of the most uh, misunderstood and uh, potentially relevant elections uh, uh, to, to 2012 here, uh, the 1980 presidential election. Uh, I, I, so let me know what you think. Is that how you remember it? I know a lot of you looked through this. 
Um, uh, do you think it's relevant to 2012? Uh, uh, Republicans certainly do. You see this all over uh, uh, columns and blogs and message boards. Uh, are they right? Are they wrong? Why or why not? Let me know. Anyway, I'm Professor Ritz. That was TYT History. Uh, thanks for listening. I hope you learned something.